Lionel Messi is a human being. How can you marble? And how do you stop a thief? How can I read your mind? We did that. Yes. We did that before, no. No. Toppy, you can't even read your own mind, let alone anybody else's. <laughs> Freddie, I will read both your minds both. at the same time. In front of you, you will find three 10p coins. Correct, so star. far. Mm -hmm. OK, now then, I'm going to ask you in a moment to choose one of those three coins, and I will tell you which one you chose when you replace it whilst wearing a blindfold no. and without using a safety net. No so, OK, now I want you to choose which one of the three, pick it up, Hold it in your hand over your head like so. Yeah. And concentrate on which one of the three it is you have in your hand, whether it is left or right or middle. Carol, it's not coming through. Carol, no, you're gonna have to start tapping your head like this, Carol. Tap your head, tap your head. Fred, tap your head. I'm tapping, Harder. tapping. Now, it's starting to come through now. Yeah. It's not... Ow. Yes, I've got it. Okay, replace the coins. Replace the coins. No way this is gonna... Are both the coins down? Yes, yes. they're both down. I will tell you exactly Get which one off. of these three you chose. <laughs> Hang on a second. I need to look deep into your brain. Deep into your... Oh, that's enough. <laughs> Nothing there. It was the middle one, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Carol, to prove it's not a fluke and that I was yes. reading both your minds at the same time, look deep into my mind. I intend to read your vorder brain, your... It was that one, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> How did I do it? It's not really um, ESP mind reading at all. It's um, actually a temperature. How the coin that you picked up is warm compared to the other two. And all I've got to do is feel the three and find out which is the warmest, and that's the one you chose. But what about all the head tapping? Yeah, what about that? that? I just want to make you look ridiculous and make you suffer a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. Good how, Toppy. <laughs> how can I tell that Vikings ate herring? Do you ask? If, do you know any Vikings you, you can sort ask? Of film, For this particular how, we have to dig very deep indeed. Come with me to the how pit, and waiting mm. there for us is Dr. Andrew Jones, better known as Bone from Ark, the Archaeological Resource Centre in York. And there he is. All right, Andrew. Yeah, fine. Can I come on down? Please do. On my way through the layers of history to the bottom of the how archaeological dig, because this is where the answer to the how lies. Bones. Hi. Hi. What have you got here? Well, we've been doing some sieving to see what sort of bits and pieces we can find. And we've got some things that we've collected by troweling away and picking out big things. What have you found? This is um, a shoe, a Viking Age toddler's shoe. It's an amazing um, discovery in remarkably good condition. You can see where the toggle went through the little hole there. So there's a little person who was alive um, a thousand years ago would have worn that. That's extraordinary. And there's a piece of Viking Age pottery. It's highly distinctive with these uh, particular fingerprints on them. It's there. Yeah. And the last thing, which is highly characteristic, is a comb. And the fashion in all these objects changed through time, so we know we're in Viking Age layers. Extraordinary. But the how, of course, was, how can we tell that the Vikings ate herring? Well, yes, indeed. And we can do that by looking for food remains. And most of these are tiny things, so we've got to do the sieving. And what we found are fruit stones. Some of them are wild fruit stones, sloes, and others are cultivated plants, small plums and so forth. And, and these have been eaten by, by Vikings? Yes, we know these are, are fruit stones that have passed through people's intestines and come up with their poo because here is the poo. This is Viking Age poo or excrement. How extraordinary. You're sure of that? Absolutely positive, because when we look at a bit of this under a microscope, you find the eggs of worms that lived inside people's intestines in their guts. And the final piece of the whole jigsaw, the solution to the detective story, is here. That's right, because mixed in with the poo and the fruit stones and the other food remains are lots of tiny herring bones, many of which are crushed when people have chewed them up. Fascinating. So that's how we can tell that Vikings ate herring. Dr. Andrew Jones, Bone, thank you. Thank you. For showing us how. Thank you. Hmm. How do you stop a thief?
You've got to employ security guards these days, haven't you? To Fred, have you any ideas? I think it's virtually impossible to stop thieves. It is pretty tricky, and it is a problem about which I have been pondering. Come with me to Carol's Clubber, which is a rather small branch of the Vorderman Corporation. Within these walls, we sell exclusive designer T-shirts. Now, the problem of people stealing these T-shirts has been, well, it's been taxing my brain, and I've come up with a couple of solutions. This is one of them. These are special labels. Now, you can print anything you like onto these labels. We happen to have printed barcodes. You stick them onto the T-shirt. When the thief comes along, shoves the T-shirt under his jacket and wants to go out of the door. But by the door, we have these special stands. Now, as the label passes through these stands, it completes the alarm circuit and the alarm goes off. It's clever, but it's not foolproof. Supposing the customer's paid for that, but the label hasn't been taken off. Well, all you do is when you pay for it, at the uh, counter, they take the scanner and neutralise the label and so you can get out without the alarm going off. Yeah, but really, a clever thief, all he's going to do is get past those things and run like mad. Do a runner. Do a runner? Yeah. Nah, I thought about that as well, you see. Even if he can get through the doors and get home with the T-shirt, I have employed this. This is ink pellet technology. Hey, what do you mean, ink pellet technology? It is extremely clever. You put the tag onto the T-shirt, it is very nasty and very difficult to get off. I bet a thief could get one of those Do you think off so? if they tried. Yeah, yeah, Do you it think can't you be... could? I don't think it's that hard. All right, Let me have a go. You have a go. There we go. There's it's just a, a plastic clip with a pin, is it, that just needs levering off? Mm -hmm. All right, but well, we protect it. Very it. Anybody can protective do it. glasses. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go on, Tom. Right. It can't be so difficult go to get on. off. Very nasty, this. Yeah, I've got edge on it anyway yes. already. Right, one yes. turn and. Hang on. Oh, there, that's it. It's off. <laughs> yes. Oh, but hang on a second. It's ink everywhere. Oh, it's ruined the shirt, Carol. It has absolutely ruined the T-shirt. Now, what was on the tag was this. There are four glass pellets in here full of ink. And when you try to lever it off, what happens is you break it, you break the pellets, all the ink comes out. It wrecks the T-shirt so you can't sell it and you can't wear it. And that is how you could stop a thief. How messy is a human being? Well, I'm a little bit messy, I suppose, yes, you upstairs. Are. Yes, I am. Really, on the contrary, yeah. I'm extremely tidy, actually. Are you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think you've actually misunderstood what I'm talking about. It's very easily done, that is. I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the human being as a race, and I'm talking about the shedding of skin. Oh. Now, um, a lot of animals shed skin. In fact, spiders shed their skin. Have a look at this tarantula here. If I pick up this thing here, you can see... And that is a tarantula's skin. The owner is down here. Now, she's called Erica. And if you look at Erica, you'll notice that she's a lot bigger than her old skin. That's because spider skin is rigid. And in order to grow, they actually have to pop out of the skin. The nice thing about spiders is they shed their skin all in one piece. Now then, here's another animal that sheds its skin. Look at this. Recognise that? That's actually a snake's head. In fact, it's an entire snake skin in one piece. And the owner of this skin is um, Harry, this rather magnificent python. Now, Harry's skin there, indeed, one day will get shed itself as Harry grows into a larger creature. But how do snakes shed their skin? They actually wriggle out of the old dry skin, uh, much in the same way as you might peel a sock off your foot. Now, the old skin is left behind, and the new, shiny skin snake emerges from beneath, all soft and having had a facelift. Yes, but what yes. about the how? The yeah. how was how messy are human beings? We've Not gone snakes right round the spiders. animal world. What, what about, about human the beings? All right, how all right, all yeah. right. Well, human shed skin as well. Not in one piece, but every day, skin gets rubbed off. And in fact, the average human loses about 30 grams of skin every day. Not in one piece, but in lots of tiny crumbly bits. And did you know that your household dust is mostly made of human skin? So every time you're vacuuming, you're cleaning up after humans. And in fact, in a whole year, the human, the average human, loses wow. 11 kilograms of skin. Now, that is an awful loss of vacuuming up. So, if anyone asks you how messy is a human being, think of the amount of vacuuming required to tidy up after this one in a year, 
and that's messy. What a skinful. <laughs> how do you marble? What do you mean, how do you marble? Marbling yeah. is a simple, effective and very pretty form of paper decoration. Let me show you exactly what I mean. If you look on the inside covers of old books, you'll see something like that. That is marbling. Ah, I see. OK? Mm. That is marbling. Uh-huh. OK? Mm -hmm. If you look along the edges of old ledgers and accounts books, you'll see that. And that is marbling. Oh, right. Good, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you do it? Do you want to know how to do it? Yeah. I'll show you, because it's so simple and it's so effective that anybody could do it. Or even you. Even I can do it, <laughs> and I've been doing it for years. All you need is a little tray of water and add to that some oil paint. So you've got to have a bit of flair and a bit of swirl. Mm. You can use ordinary powder paint if you want to and add cooking oil to it. But it's got to be oil-based, has it's it? It's got to be oil-based because you that? need paint to float on the surface. Oh, That's the crucial part of this how. Lots of splish and splosh. You need to be fairly artistic, but when you've been doing it as long as I have, <laughs> it comes almost a second nature. Oh, you dear. just paint on the water, Fred, and that's You it, sort of it? paint on the water the original watercolour. Yeah. And if you want to achieve that stripy effect you get on the edge of a book, drag a little fork through it. But if you just want a normal common or garden effect, drop a sheet of paper, any sort of paper, on the top of the water, leave it there for a few seconds, take it off, and lo and behold, you have produced ah. a work of art. Very nice, Fred. <laughs> take it away, hang it up with your other works of art, of which I have a few here, and let the whole thing dry. But what do you do with it when it is dried? Lots and lots of things. You can put the paper around boxes to make gifts more attractive. You can put it around books and diaries to make them more attractive. Or around a pencil box. Or even around a photo or a cartoon, cartoon of a very favourite relative. <laughs> there you are. That's how you marble. Marvellous, isn't it? <laughs> How can I wash a car with a single bucket of water? You can't wash a whole car with a single bucket, Kelly. No, you mm -hmm. definitely need at least three. It's the first wash, the second wash, the no, 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 no. Let me show you how. With this bowl of water and this extremely important scientific implement. That's a kid's now, bath toy. No, it isn't. This is going to show you how a one-way valve works. Now, you can see it will draw water in through the bottom here mm -hmm. and as I put it into the bowl of water and start to bring the plunger up and down you can see that it's bringing the water uphill with it now as it comes up the valve closes and pulls the water as it goes down the valve opens to let it go down to the bottom again you can see that as I do that it brings the water uphill rather nicely yes but your one-way valve masquerading as a kid's bath toy what's that got to do with cleaning a car with one bucket <laughs> I've been working on this device. Now, oh, here we have the bucket of water and this with a brush at the end. Now, this has a one-way valve down at the bottom of the tube and as I try to wash the car vigorously, you can see the level of water in the tube starts to rise. And if I do it strongly... Yes, all right, all right. Carol, we can show. You still yes. could clean a car with that. Well, I couldn't, no. But you two can. Walk uh, this way, please. Hey. Oh. Now, I'm afraid my car is slightly dirtier than slightly it normally is. Really? 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 Yes. Well, I was doing a little bit of rally driving over the, uh, over the weekend. Now, here what? we have the single bucket of water, two of the special Vorderman Corporation devices, and um, now we will see whether one bucket of water can actually wash a whole car. To do it firstly. That's it, that's it. Hang on, Fred, you got another car. Hey, don't waste get it the over water. me, you fool. Get round the other side of that car. I'm doing this bit, you do that bit. I'm helping you, aren't I? Help that bit. I'm getting so hot for you around, all right? <laughs> OK. All right. You keep the wet coming, I'll do the brushing. I'll follow you around. Come on, get a move on. It's off. I'm not doing anything, I'm doing the fun. Your thing's out again. Oh, Fred! I've got mine, you've got yours. Oh, oh, that's, uh, that's lovely, boys. That's absolutely marvellous. And how much have we got left? We've still got about a half a bucket left. Oh, thank you so much. And that is how you can clean a whole car using just a single bucket of water and two idiots. And that is how. How. For now. How.
There is a little bit you missed under here, actually. 